It's the National Football League on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the AFC North. It's the Riverhogs and the Nighthawks. All that and more coming up next. This is the NFL on EA Sports as we come to you from the banks of the Missouri River at Omaha, Nebraska. But today, no waiting around. We jump right into an AFC North battle in week one as it'll be the River Hogs of Louisville taking on the Nighthawks of Omaha. With my good friend Charles Davis in the booth, I'm Brandon Gordon, and the moment has finally arrived, CD. It's time to begin a new NFL season. Partner, there's no hiding my excitement as I got ready this morning. I could not wait to get here for this game. Imagine what it's like out there on the field for those players, though. OTAs, training camp, preseason, it's all led to this moment when they officially kick this one off to get the season underway. New season of NFL football is here, and we're off in 2023 on EA Sports. On the return, here's Jerome Ford, and he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Leading them out, a first-round pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, former Clemson Tiger, Deshaun Watson. And he makes it so difficult for all defenses because when he's got the ball, it's hard to say when a play is truly over because he can create from any spot on the field and in any situation, even when it appears that he's contained. When he's running your offense, a big play could arrive from any possible spot. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. From the 25, here's second and six. Watson now going to run the option right. It's on the ground. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And that one coming on his opening carry of the season. Do you give him a mulligan? You would like to, but this game counts. <laughs> if this were preseason, he'd get a mulligan. But this is for real, so not expecting that at all. Got to find a way to take care of it. I'm sure he'll get other opportunities. So now you've got their offense coming out for the first time with great initial field position. And leading them out, a man who has led his team to the conference championship game the last two seasons, winning it two years ago. Here's Joe Burrow. And when you come into the league as the number one guy selected, a lot of hype comes with it. Sometimes that weight can be unbearable. But this young man, he took that weight on and handled it as well as you can imagine. And I love his ability to make a second, third reaction play and create downfield. Play action. It's Burrow. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. And they move this all the way down to the nine. 23 yards on the play. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. Here's Burrow. And it's caught. Touchdown. Jamar Chase, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the River Hogs are on the board here first in the season opener. Well, Charles, here in their opening series, they said they had certain plays scripted for certain players. That looked like a well-designed play to get one of their top targets involved. Yeah, let's face it, Brandon. A player of his talent is a problem for any opponent to defend, and we saw it right there. They tried to deny an open lane to him. He still outplayed the coverage and scored the early touchdown. Good luck trying to figure out how to defend him as this game moves on. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. And one of the things we like to hit on every year are the new rule changes. And we got a few for 2023. A lot are procedural, having to do with deadlines and roster construction and such. But, but two kind of caught my eye, Charles. One is the option to fair catch a kickoff and have it come out to the 25 like it does in college. You like that? 
I don't. I don't like it at all. I don't like it in college. I don't like it in the NFL. I want to have something different. And I really wanted the special teams coaches to be a little bit more involved. But I do understand why the league is doing it. They believe it promotes safety, and it's hard to argue against that. What about, this is the other one, guys can now wear the number zero. We've already seen some make the switch. Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Swift, Braxton Berrios, amongst others. Yeah, and you know something? When you see those guys make that move, I don't mind that at all, all right? A little more expressionism for these guys. I love it. I just think we didn't go far enough. What about double zero, like Jim Otto used to wear or Kenny Burrow used to wear? Let's add that back to the NFL jerseys. And Bojorquez on to punt as he gets it away. Oh, the return is Jones. And call that an even 50 yards on the punt with seven on the return. And they will take over first and 10. Back onto the field comes this offense ready for their second drive. And Charles, nothing like squaring off with a division opponent, a division rival in week one. Do you like that they are matching up this early or would you prefer a game like this be a few weeks down the road? I actually like the early matchup for a few reasons, Brandon. First of all, it allows you to see that in the entire offseason and know, hey, right out of the gate, we're playing a division game. Second part is it spreads them out a little bit. If you just have them all bunched up at the end of the year, that's not as much fun watching teams try to survive that gauntlet when you do have injuries down the stretch. And last but not least, Let's face it, we're TV people. What a great game to sell right out of the gate. From the 48-yard line, here's second down and seven. They snapped that at one. Now it's Burrow over the middle. That's caught by Chase. So five yards here, five on the play. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Oh, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? A false start backs him up five, first and 15. After the penalty, it's Mixon. They get the penalty yardage back plus a yard. Six yard gain and it's second and nine. A quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Back to Mixon on second down. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. That good for 19 and a first down. Coming in, he really liked his chance of having a big year based on a terrific offseason. And runs like that on opening weekend show that he's right. From the red zone now, here's Burrow first down. Throwing middle, and it's complete. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Ball at the six here as they work with a second and two. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Burrow on play action. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. The first and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of them. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, things are going to happen faster, so you've got to get the ball out quick. Not going to have much time in the pocket before the defenders bring pressure. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. An option handoff here to Mixon. 
Showed off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop. Ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick. Throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. A gain of five, but not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. It's now fourth. They run for it with Mixon, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Joe Mixon punching it in from a yard away. And the River Hogs' decision to go for it pays off with six points. An early decision point here, Charles. Maybe one we'll look back on later. They go on fourth and goal, and they punch it in for the touchdown. We always talk about how football is a game of confidence, and that's how you get it right there. Leave your offense out there and tell them I believe in you. And they pay it off with six points. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Omaha's offense back out for another series. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Watson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Here's second and seven now from the 28. and seven at the 28-yard line. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. They go with Chubb on second down. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Third down and six. A one-yard gain brings up third and six. Watson now to throw. Going out wide, finds Chubb. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. It'll go as a gain of four. And that's going to make it fourth down. Here's Corey Bajorquez now. A well-hit ball there. 50 yards on the punt. Three on the return. And it will be first and ten as they take over. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. 43 yards for him on the ground in this first quarter. He has been tremendous to start the new year. From the 23, here's a second and four. Now Burrow. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked up by Jeremiah owusu koromoa And he will take this one off. A touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I think they, were they a nickel? Do they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big time Dustin pick Hopkins six. On Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. And that one makes it 14 to 7. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Charlie Jones now from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. So here's Louisville set to take over on offense. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines to run for for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to a turn. 
Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there. Those guys be able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series. But what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Second quarter now, and it's our home team with possession. From the 38 now, here's second down and five. And again, it's Chubb. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun on third, Watson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. Well, he and his offense were staring down what was likely a three and out. Zero fear from his side, though. Never doubt for a second they pick up the first. He's ready to pull the trigger on a keeper the moment it revealed itself. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And this offense on third down today, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. Here's Watson. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Daxton Hill picks it off, and his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. And that's a ball that he is going to want to keep his first career interception in the National Football League. And I love what teams do when that happens. You bring the ball to the sideline, the equipment guy grabs it, he puts a piece of tape on it, writes on it so that you know what it is, and then they tuck it away so that you can have it for later and put it on your mantle. Pretty good deal for him right there. Now he's eager to get back out on the field and get his second one. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 45. They'll start here with a give to Mixon. They'll get this up to the 47 and brought down there. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Now a third and six. Now it's Burrow. Can't get away, and he's taken down. He could not get away that time, and it'll be a loss of 11 on third down. Well, that's the second time he's been sacked so far in the first half, and if they have designs on having a big year, on going anywhere, they've got to find a way to keep him upright so they can throw the football. Here's Brad Robbins now. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So if 
frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. To throw on second is Watson. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. Will go down as a gain of six. And now that sets up third and two. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third down, here's Hunt. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. Watson on first down. So as they talk it over, we step aside. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From just shy of midfield, here's second and two. Back to throw, Watson. This complete to David Bell. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. of play action it's Watson and he'll be hit as he releases it and that'll fall incomplete well they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down now they have to gear up try and get two more stops and escape this drive and very little there he might have gotten a yard yeah I think he got a yard to the 41 if they want a first they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down now it's Watson. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had a lot of looking behind him. That also a career-long kick for the veteran, Charles. Yeah, how about what he just got done there? We always knew he had a big leg, but how about everything coming together perfectly on that one? Great leg swing, and bang that one through. Here's Jones to bring it out of the end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So here's Louisville set to take over on offense. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon to the 22-yard line. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. 57 yards rushing for him in his first half as he is looking in mid-season form here in the opener. Mixon with a first down carry. And he'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. It's Mixon on the counter. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh -uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa. Big impact play, a tackle for loss. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Now it's Burrow. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. It'll be a gain of five. And third and eight now. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Burrow. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And a good quarterback 
facing zone coverage if he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene that's what's going to happen no doubt about it if there's no pressure he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield you can only cover for so long so maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme get a little bit more pressure remember when Carolina did that against Denver they lost the game ultimately they dropped the defensive end out and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50 Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. On second down, here's Burrow. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. This now a third and four. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. It's a 13-yard pickup as the downs reset. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen pass. Touchdown! T. Higgins from 21 yards away. And they're able to add on to their advantage. So a good start to the campaign so far for them here in week one. Yeah, all the things that you dreamed about in April and May and that you worked on in July and August, getting ready for this game, it's all coming together so far. And McPherson on for the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was T. Higgins who capped the drive with the touchdown reception. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. And now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaking up. We always hate to see injuries, especially tough here in week one, just hoping this is nothing serious. We'll take a quick timeout. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. Watson trying to get his guys moving. Here's Watson now on second down. Into the hands of Cedric Tillman. And they'll get this right past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 27 yards there, a first down. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on him. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. Now a first down throw, Watson. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Turnabout is fair play, I guess. They had a pick six against them earlier, and now this defense, Charles, they get a pick six of their own. And for a moment, let's just set aside how it impacts the scoreboard because how about the response? One defense gets the pick six, the other comes back and matches it. These are two defenses that are planning on winning the game for their teams themselves. McPherson on for the point after. And the lead is up to 18 now. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. This offense back to work now late in this first half. And with a three-score deficit staring him in the face, they might have to press the issue here and try to get points out of this drive. They set up the screen to Chubb. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Now another timeout called for by the offense. 
as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. Under pressure now, Watson, and down he goes. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just burrow his way back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. No gain on the play there, second down. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. As we send you to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. It was Joe Mixon who had it working in the first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far, but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. All right, coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. No run back here for Jones, a touchback. For this offense ready to go right. to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Well, it's too early to figure out what kind of adjustments this defense made at halftime, but that's a good start to the second half. They can now afford to give up more points and fall further behind, so well done to force the punting situation here. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Here's Nick Chubb as they try to fire up this run game. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. First and 10 at the 34 yard line. Here's Watson. Drops it off for Chubb. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. Second and six at the 38 yard line. Hunt will try going up the middle. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 12 yards there and a first down. The running game fully in sync, 1-11 to on that play. And sometimes it comes from the offensive coordinator understanding what he thinks the defense is going to do and dialing up the perfect play. Sometimes the quarterback, though, can look at the defense 
realize he needs to change it to a run, and that gets it done in a big way as well. That one goes for 24 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. Right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. He's got his receiver, Cooper. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. First and goal at the five-yard line. They'll run with Chubb. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Leads to second and goal at the four-yard line. Chubb again. And good work there defensively as they're able to keep him out of the end zone. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Now Watson, they'll roll him out right. And he will take this one in for a touchdown. Deshaun Watson taking it in from four yards out. And the Nighthawks get a bit closer. Hey, you're down on the scoreboard, but now your offense is in close, and this is where, as a quarterback, you say, I've got to make a play here. It doesn't matter whether it's a pinpoint throw or a scramble like this one. He takes matters into his own hands and delivers a touchdown run. Extra point good by Hopkins, and the lead is down to 11 at 28-17. Setting out to kick this one away, and off it goes. On the return is Charlie Jones. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Louisville offense back out now. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10. Burrow looking to pass. He'll drop this one down to mix it. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll make it second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Delay of game, offense. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still second down. So the delay of game penalty moves it back five. That makes it second and ten. Burrow will throw. Under pressure and down he goes. It was Miles Garrett that time who got in there and brought him down. Like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Now Burrow. Quick hitter here. It's complete. Just a gain of a couple there. And that's going to bring up the fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So they bring out their punter as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've gotten pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing is working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, with the same tempo, and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. Out of the gun, Watson. He's got the connection to Cooper. 
And he's brought down. 12 yards there and a first down. Certainly worth noting, he's now one catch away from 600. He's at 599 in his career. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Running with Hunt here out of the shotgun. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. They'll try to run for the first down with Hunt. And Hunt is not going to get there. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. On fourth down, Watson. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with a football. The fourth down pass play doesn't work out. And as a result, possession switches hands. Fourth down and they take to the air, which really isn't a major surprise, but how about the coverage? They're able to bat it down. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Open man is Chase complete. Second down at four. At the 38 yard line. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. He'll go right back to Chase. That's caught again. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. It's a game of six. And a Louisville first down. Play action. It's Burrow. Oh, the turnover fest continues. Here's another interception. Picked up by Greg Newsom. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. So a potential momentum shifter there, working with a two-score lead third quarter. But that, not the smartest of throws. I would agree with you on that one because this game is still very much in the balance. It felt pretty one-sided to this point. But now, if these guys can turn this turnover into points, things could start getting a little more interesting. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Getting out a ton of success here so far. But you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. He's still on his feet. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. Well, you know, most quarterbacks, when you talk about their big playability, you talk about the arm. But this, an absolutely huge play with a leg. And also with his mind, because he had to see this play develop in order to make the decision to keep it and run. And how about... Him looking up and seeing the C's part for him once he got past the line of scrimmage. My first thought. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. A touchdown run there from a yard out. And the Nighthawks are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. Ah, uh, we're getting set up for what should be a great fourth quarter. This is a hard-hitting game because both teams have punched and counter-punched equally well. And here's a good finish to this drive. A touchdown run here late in the third quarter. Kevin Stefanski going to leave the offense out to go for two. Looking to maybe throw for it here, Watson. And this one is caught. So they come up with a two-point conversion. And that makes this a one-point game now. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet and said, go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. 
So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. And this will come out to the 25 as Jones elects for the touchback. And the Louisville offense back out now. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and 10. They begin with a run by Mixon. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. He takes this for three to the 29. He's tackled at the 29-yard line. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. This offense so far on third down, they've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and six. Now it's Burrow. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. First down. Here's Burrow. Short throw to Smith. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the 46-yard line. Now it's Burrow. A quick throw there is incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes his upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting the game. Looking deep here for Chase. It's caught at the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been revved up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defense have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. They'll give it to Mixon. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. A gain of five brings up second and goal. Mixon again. And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. Joe Mixon already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. And the River Hogs get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Extra point by McPherson. Up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. But here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. They begin this drive with Chubb. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. 45 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. From the 25, here's second and three. From the gun, here's Watson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to him. Remember throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead. 
and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. Gonna need something special here on third and long. After that sack, what does Watson have in his arsenal? Looking to throw. And he's gonna go down again. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has not received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. So here's Louisville set to take over on offense. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. On first and 10, Joe Burrow got a man open. It's Chase. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. He'll get just a yard on the scramble in second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while well, he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. They'll go for a gain of seven, and that'll leave them with a third and two. A gain of seven yards, and it's third down. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and seven. Here's Burrow. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. On the option left, it's Burrow. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Throw left side complete, Brad Smith. Short completion, just four yards. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. On third down, Mixon. And he'll be tackled right on the 10, well short of the first down. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that may be not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist, but time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. And here's the Omaha offense getting set to go now. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter 
run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Here's Watson. He's got Akins, the tight end. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That one good for 37 yards. It's just called, as we just saw it right there, a breakdown defensively. Seems like no one went with the tight end, and no one really did. Had all sorts of space in the middle of the field. Yeah, everyone else was covered, but he was not. Big play results. On first down, Watson. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. From the red zone now, Watson. Throw left side, he's got Tillman. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it's second down. Now it's Watson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Going to need something special here on third and long. After that sack, what does Watson have in his arsenal? A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down. Threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary. Incomplete pass. When are these quarterbacks going to learn? You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And as a result, possession switches hands. So now with a two-minute warning coming up fast, that puts a mammoth dent in their comeback hopes. I like how you phrased it. It's a dent because there's still opportunity. They've got to get the ball back on defense, obviously twice. But guess what? This thing is not close to being over. They need to go ahead and play it out. Not over. As you said, two-score game still. And he'll wind up getting this to the 32, a play that started at the 16, and that's how many yards they get. First down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. On second down, here's Mixon. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. They go down to a knee, and the new campaign off to a good start. It's a win here in week one. And just how they envisioned the start of the season, kneeling it down, defense can't stop the clock. This one's a winner. You know what's really strange? I think a lot of people think that the kneel down practice stuff really only happens like one time a week. The best teams I know, they practice starting back in OTAs. They want them to visualize winning a game and how great that feels, and they got it done in this one. Yep, a knee gets them to 1-0. Well, this was not just the opener of a brand new season, but this was a division game here in week one. And to come through with a 1-0 start against a division opponent gives you a little something extra heading forward for the rest of the season. Yeah, let's pile it all into one game, right? Opening the season and you open within the division, you knew the motivation was going to be there on both sidelines. One just executed better and earned the win.
So for Louisville, hey, you get a win, you get it on the road. You can't ask for much more than that to start the year. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Omaha, they go down to defeat here in the opener. And they will try to get back in the swing of things next week on the road. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.